Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Thomas from Balancing Touch Reflexology. And today I want to talk about the arms and the legs and how they fit on the foot in reflexology. So let's go take a look at that. So when I was learning reflexology, I learned that this is where the arms and the legs go. And I just went on with it and went, oh, okay, that's interesting. And my teacher explained how they fit and it made sense to me at the time. But it wasn't until I started to dive into what I call now the Reflexology Visual Dictionary series where I started to draw out and, and think a little bit and, and get deeper into the understanding of how the reflexes fit on the foot that I really understood how the arms and the legs fit on the feet. So it was interesting because as I was looking and doing my investigation and research, I noticed that there was a whole bunch of different placements for the arms and the legs. Like for example, this chart, this is what I actually had finally decided on would uh, work for me, were the arms to be up the side here, you can see the hand there, and the legs on the side here, right? But you can see in other charts, like this one here, that the arm is actually wrapped around the back of the foot. And so this made me kind of be like, well, what's, what's the deal here? Um, shouldn't it all be exactly the same? And when I asked that question, I kind of went, oh, okay, well, why would there be different placement for the arms and legs? And I came up with a simple answer is that the arms and the legs, they move. They're so easy to move outside of the body because if you look at the feet and you kind of make the toes disappear, you end up with the torso of the body, right? And so when you do that, the arms and legs stick outside of the torso, right? And they move, right? The legs and the arms move around. And so, you know, if I'm just relaxing my arms at the side, there's one placement there. My arms can be up like this. There's another placement. I can kind of walk around even like this. And there's another placement. And so it's really interesting that all these different placements started to be drawn out. The fetal position or the fetus kept coming up in my reflexology research. One of the examples is that, you know, if you look at the ear, it's kind of in the shape of a fetus, right? You have the head down here and the body wraps around. And so it's, it's like ready to be born and come out into this world. And so that was a really interesting concept. So if I go and put my body into a fetal position, and if you go up like that, what you're getting is a model of the body. And if I turn this way, oh, I need some balance here. If I turn this way, but imagine my other leg also up here, right? You can see that the knees and the elbows are together. My wrists are up around my shoulders and my ankles are right around my bottom here, right? So that's kind of an interesting map. And if you take it a little bit further and add in the reflexology belief that you have a left side and you have a right side, then that gives us some other information as well. So you're getting this kind of a model, right? So rather than the arms crossing, they would be over here. And still, again, you're getting the knees that touch here and you're getting the ankles down here and the wrists up here. So that's one way that I thought was really um, interesting. And that's actually the model that I ended up going with when I was drawing out my chart. So you can see here that I had finally decided to put the arms here and the legs here. Because in my mind, that made the most sense. And the interesting thing also is that if you add in the information of referral areas, um, I made a video on this a little bit earlier and then I, you know, in the description below, you can check it out. If you add in the information of referral areas, then if your hands are crossed this way or if they're crossed this way, it doesn't really make a difference. This wrist here refers to this wrist here. And another interesting thing too, that if you have the arms coming down the sides of the body, like if I look at this map here, if you actually have the arms extending, they meet down where the ankle is here. The ankles are also referral areas to the wrist, right? So that's a really exciting thing because, so it doesn't really matter if the wrists are, or the hands and wrists are up here, 
because they refer to the areas that are down here anyway. So it's the same thing. So all these maps actually started to make sense to me of how they all are related and how none of them are wrong. They all can get beautiful information and um, you know, the end goal anyway is to work with the clients and help them be well. So if your arms and you're working up here and the intention is to do good and work on the wrists and help that client, you're going to do that, right? Or if they're down here, right? I just wanted to share with you today um, a little bit about the arms and the legs because um, I have had some comments in the past going, well, the arms and the legs aren't in the right position and why did you decide to do that? So I wanted to make this video to kind of explain that, you know, because the arms and the legs are, can move and they're outside of the main torso of the body, people are going to draw them in different areas of what they think and where they have found the reflexes to be. So anyway, thanks for watching and I hope that helps anybody who's been a little bit confused about the arms and the legs and, you know, maybe there's a big, um, you know, battle out there going, no, the arms are here, no, they're here. Um, but under my discovery, I've found out that it's all basically the same areas that you're working. They just might be referral areas rather than, you know, working directly on the wrist if you, um, you know, believe that. So th those are my thoughts on the arms and the legs. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about this. So until next time, happy reflexology and this is Adam Thomas from Balancing Touch, supporting your walk through life. Bye bye. Let me know what you thought of this video by leaving a comment below. Any type of feedback can be useful. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. And if you found it useful, feel free to share it with anybody who might be interested. Make sure that you have subscribed to this channel if you haven't already. And make sure that you hit, or better yet, step on that bell icon so you know when the next video is coming out. And if you have some more time, why don't you check out some other videos? Till next time, this is Adam Thomas from balancingtouch.ca.